welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross and today I'm going to do sort of my retrospective look at Chaos Space Marines. Now I'm doing this just to set up a caveat before War of Spider, uh, you know the Fabius Bio stuff comes out, really because this is a look back at 8th and I'm feeling that's coming out a little bit too late to really be considered in you know, 8th edition, uh, and I wrote this a wee bit ago, so I'm sort of saying, nope, none of the Fabius Bio stuff, that's uh, considered off limits here. So, how this works is I'm going to have a look uh, a wee bit before 8th edition, just talk about where Chaos was, where it was evolving from, then I'm going to have a look at the rules, how they're working for Chaos Space Marines, and then their sort of model set, give you my thoughts on them, and uh, what I think is like strengths and weaknesses there. Uh, one thing I'm going to caveat beforehand, because this is probably a big way I look at Chaos Space Marines, is that, see if it's got the demon keywords in Chaos Space Marines, I almost don't consider it to be a Chaos Space Marine. And that's a big caveat on that one, because uh, there's a few stuff in there. You know, I'll look at it and go, does this look like it's, you know, a Chaos Space Marine, or does it look just more demony and filling up the ranks of Chaos Space Marines? So there's going to be a lot of talk about that as well. Uh, and also considering, you know, their potential of new codexes possibly in the line, that's going to be stuff I'm going to speak about. So the codexes, just to begin with, you've got Chaos Space Marines, are Chaos Space Marines, Psycho Awakening, Faith and Fury, you've also got Vigis Ablaze, and you've also got the Index Forces of Chaos for Forge World. So that's quite a bit of books you need to go there, along with, you know, you've got chapter approved, etc, etc as well. So that's a fair bit of reading for Chaos Space Marines, and all are more or less still relevant, though Vigilus Blaze has gone down a wee bit on that one uh, today, but certainly Codex and Faith and Fury are absolutely essential. So that gives you an idea on the books them. So where were Chaos Space Marines just before uh, 9th edition? If you had said to me, you know, five years ago, you know, 2015, hey, you know, we're going to have Primarchs coming back, you know, and two of them, the majority, you know, two being the majority, are going to be Chaos. I'm like, nah, man, that's, that's not going to happen. Um, so now we also have, you know, uh, no, they're not, not in the Chaos Space Marine Force, is Expansion of Chaos. Uh, we do have Primarchs come back, which is excellent. If you told me we had Legion-specific rules, now I know I think in 3.5, back in like 2000 and, <gasps> I want to say two or three, whenever it was, uh, you did have some sort of Legion stuff, but not very much. Uh, in 7th edition, you know, we got uh, the Traitor Legion book, now that was at the very end, I think that was December 2016, and it was a fantastic book, the Traitor Legion one, it added so many rules to Chaos Space Marines, really, really actually was a great addition. Uh, and then obviously you had Magnus, he came out I think in the same month as well. And generally, that was the sort of beginning of Chaos really beginning to ramp up to become sort of more similar to the extent of what their Loyalist brothers were. Not entirely, there's still a lot of work on that one, on that side. But we then got an idea that there was the Legion rules, which were very, very specific. I don't think you really had that so much in 7th. But you got this idea of more of an identity with Chaos Space Marines similar to their Loyalist brothers. I don't say brothers, loyal former brothers. That'll work. So, you know, it was a very interesting time for Chaos uh, at 7th. It really did sort of, you know, we saw a big progression we did not expect. And then in 9th edition, you know, that's when we started getting uh, the separated codexes. So, Thousand Sons and Death Guard, Death Guard being at the beginning, did get their separated codexes, which started to move away from the Chaos Forces. You know, we no longer had Typhus in the Chaos Space Marine Codex. Uh, we did have Araman in the Codex, I believe, in the first volume. We don't have in the second one. He's now fully moved on to A Thousand Suns. I could be wrong in that, but we are sort of seeing, similar to Space Marines, this sort of their individual codexes, which is expanding Chaos in general, but not really the Chaos Space Marines part. In anything, you are losing stuff from it the captures and everything going into their individual codex. So that gives you an idea, you know, where the progression was of Chaos Space Marines. We, we were originally in seventh, this big blob of just all the Chaos stuff, etc, etc. And now with the separation of codexes, what does that leave now with Chaos Space Marines? And, you know, there are still many options, but there's a lot of things to look at and say, well, where can we evolve from here? Right, so the beginning of ninth, you know, 
Chaos Basements was one of the first codexes out. In fact, I believe it is now the oldest codex. You can talk about the, the Volume 2 codex, but really it, it was just updated data cards and the, the chance and a few things that changed. But it was not really, I would consider, a second codex. It was just adding a few bits and bobs in. So really, I would consider Chaos Space Means to be the oldest codex of its foundational rules. Uh, if you really want to fight in that one, you can maybe see Grey Knights. I believe they are as well. Um, the, the third one, if you want to complain about that. But really, the foundations of Chaos are very, very old. With that, they do have, much like their Loyalist Brothers, there was a high expectation of what power armor was going to be. Uh, certainly, AP changes made power armor shook up entirely. And, you know, when 8th edition was incepted, they were obviously expecting power armor to be very, very powerful, and obviously toughness and everything, but it wasn't, and that's where you've seen a vast reduction in points on models with power armor, because it was just not holding up to be as tough anymore. And that, that was a big, big problem. Uh, the Legion traits overestimate uh, estimate, estimation, you know, Chaos Space Marines, much like many other Space Marines, you know, I think Dark Angels, Blood Angels, Space Wolves, Custodes, etc. Basically anything in power armor, uh, really still limit, limited to infantry, bikers, dreads, uh, and characters. Uh, you know, they had to add in a few keywords there to make sure the Demon Prince and the Lord Discordant were still relevant. But they wrote the Legion traits, which are fundamental rules, thinking power armor was going to be good, and it wasn't, as far as I'm aware. And that was a real, real problem there. And then last thing is that, you know, first round stratagems, not so good. You know, and I think uh, just a lot of changes needed there. So we're going to go into a bit more depth now. So the universal rules, the two main universal rules for Chaos Space Marines are odd ones and certainly, in my mind, need to be reviewed. These two being Death to the False Emperor and Demonic Rituals. Death to the False Emperor is actually a rule many armies would love, uh, minus the caveat, you know. We know the caveat, you know, only affects Imperium. You know, just imagine this was on Tyranids and Orcs and mainly Horde armies, it would be insane. I know there's ways for them to get it, but not like a universal rule, that would just be scary. Uh, combat is what's written a bit into Chaos, you know, Chaos Space Marines are written with mindset, I think, in Games Workshop to go, they're going to be more focused on combat. Uh, but they didn't do it too well. Uh, there is some great combinations with Death to the False Emperor, you know, Dean Prince, Lord of Scorridon and Possessed, all can do quite well. However, being struck, stuck to the Imperium uh, makes it a very restrictive rule. Plenty of units in the Imperium, don't get me wrong, plenty of armies. Uh, don't need to list all the armies because there's just so many. But a Xenos or Chaos player instantly throws this rule out the window. You know, you play against an Archaos player, what's going to happen? Death of False Emperor ain't going to happen. You go against Xenos, not going to happen. Um, you know, very few forces have that sort of restriction in their universal rule. Look at Death Watch with their special am ammunition. They're literally, you know, designed to take on Xenos, but their rules, they made sure that as a gameplay mechanic, that is enjoyable and it does affect in every game, that it's not so restrictive, that the special ammunition does affect everything. And I think that was good. It makes it feel relevant in every game. Death of False Emperor, you go, am I facing Imperium, yes or no? And when you say no, uh, it's just ignored. And that, to me, seems a bit poor game mechanic for something that is meant, although fluffy, it seems nice, uh, it just does not feel like a nice game mechanic because a large portion of your games is going to be ignored. And I don't like that. It should feel relevant in just about all your games. The other one is Demonic Ritual. This one is terrible where summoning was a large part of 7th and arguably it was a big problem in 7th it was a little bit it was just chuck if it became you know you took certain units you could just summon some summon it became astronomical i think you could summon in units that could help summon in more units you just flooded the board with three points so i do recognize that there is a problem but in this edition it's all but pointless you know when you summon in something it has to come from reserve points and because it's you roll a dice, there's no certainty that you'll get what you want out of it. You can plan for it and it could all work out, but it's it's a big risk there. And certainly that the reward is kinda little on it. Smart players, and I've seen people actually use it to do really quite well, but ultimately 
it kind of just knows, does not work in the game. This needs to be reviewed if it's play any real effect in match play, essentially. Uh, in narrative, I don't think it matters as much, but mainly people play 4K, I imagine, mostly on a, on a match play basis. And at the moment, there's not many people who want to summon and stuff. Uh, Legion Traits, this is an interesting one. On one hand, Chaos Space means have, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, have the most Legion Traits with 8 in their main codex and 6 in the Renegade ones to choose from. Usually having such variety and option would be good for you. But, you know, and give you advantage over your opponent, but there is some fundamental problems here. So let's start with the basic codex. Old Legion tra Traits, in fact, I think the oldest now, yeah, definitely the oldest. You can say what you want about the Volume 2 one, but they didn't change them in the Volume 2 one. They came from the original Codex, which makes them the oldest all round. Um, and many have now been written, you know, many Legion traits or companies or clans, etc. have been written in 8th uh, for other forces that the community have now, they looked at Legion traits and said, you know, these are the things we don't like, or when they were playtesting, they're like, oh, we want to expand on this. And the feedback on it has certainly made a much more balanced view of Legion traits later on, but the early ones are really, really bad. You know, Renegade chapters uh, just should not be in the Codex anymore because, you know, uh, you've got Space Marine ones where they're custom ones, that's what Renegade should be. Uh, even, uh, what do you call it, Vigilus Ablaze, that replaces the Renegade almost entirely with a better one in Red Corsair. Uh, it's just simply completely outdone there. And let's not even mention like word bearers. Like, people love word bearers at the moment. I've seen a lot of people playing as word bearers, and that's mainly because they love the actual word bearers stuff at the moment, the color scheme, etc. And the rule is just so, so bad that overall it needs to be really reshaped. Black Legion as well, absolutely terrible. So the basic ones in the codex, terrible. Uh, Vigilus of Blaze, still more relevant to Chaos Space Marines as compared to the Loyalist, you know, the Vigilus Define is kind of a bit redundant now with the new codex, but a Blaze is still relevant, you can still use many stuff in it for Chaos Space Marines. It was written with the current, the Volume 2 codex in mind because it came out at the same time. The new Space Marine codex, may, yeah, I've said that I was a bit uh, redundant. Uh, these Legion traits within a Blaze more or less in total are vastly superior to the Codex ones, which is kind of good. However, they come with a fairly high cost. You lose one of the best uh, stratagems that you can use in the game, which is Vets of Long War. You just can't use it with any of these Renegade ones, and it's extremely useful, and for Renegades not to get it, especially things like Brazen Beast, it takes away a lot. The stratagems, and I'll go into them in a bit more detail later for Chaos Space Marines, are not the best in general, Though they do have loads of them, there is some fundamental problems. To not have access to one of their best ones is a real problem. The other painful side is that it still only affects infantry, bikes, hellbrutes and capture essentially, and that is still not ideal. Similarly put, a review from the ground up is required, similar to Space Marines, to give this more focus. The iconic main legions are far too weak, and the Renegade should simply be successor chapter format, you know. Uh, which he did in uh, later Psychic Awakenings, it's almost became universal. You have Chaos Space Marines and you've got a successor chapter for Space Marines or you've got your custom clans. It should be Renegade Forces and they should pick up them. I think uh, just when the Psychic Awakening for uh, Faith and Fury came out, they didn't have that in mind. They didn't realise how much success it truly was. Yeah, I can, I can get it, but really it should go on from there and hopefully we'll see that in ninth. But uh, in terms of the actual Legion traits, the ones that are iconic really need to move forward because Black Legion is just terrible and we want to feel a bad in. Before I move on, I want to say, other than a personal change, which is probably unwarranted, these are two biggest changes I feel need to happen for Chaos Space Marines in terms of competitiveness. The rules that affect the whole army need to work in games well, and if other armies have vastly superior ones, so I'm talking about, you know, the Death of False Emperor and the Demon Summoning. You know, Demon Summoning's non-existent and Death of False Emperor is only in part of your games. And then you've got, you know, your Legion traits. It, they just don't work as well. For instance, Space Marines, they redid it from the ground up. Their only real, when they had Space Marines, I think their only main 
Death of False Emperor and Demon Summon equivalent was in the issue known of Fear, and it was terrible. So they redid it from the ground up, gave them uh, combat doctrines. Now, space Marine, Chaos Space Marines did get bought just print, etc. That's all fine, but you know, combat doctrines I'd consider to be the equivalent of Death of False Emperor, because Death of False Emperor only affects a certain percentage of your games, only Imperium, so it doesn't feel quite as good, and Demon, Demon Summoning is just not working at all. So, and then the Legion rules as well, these are the main things that affect your whole army, and many other armies have done it, had it a lot better, because probably the community has given feedback, they've seen where games are, these need to be addressed, these need to be fixed. Uh, to give Chaos just that bit more of an oomph and make sure these rules affect in every game. Also while writing this I came up with another thing, yeah this is important as well, Marks of Chaos are almost non-important thing in the game except to gatekeep a few stratagems and spells which is no ideal, losing variety of stratagems from this mechanic hurts, again it should be that you know you don't want to gatekeep too much which I feel is kind of happening a lot in Chaos. So here is my solution to that, because in the past, Marks of Chaos used to feel very important. In this edition, I feel they are managing restrictions and they just don't feel as good. They don't feel nice. You don't, you want to add a Mark of Chaos because you want to, you know, add an ability and go, yeah, that'd work well with them, rather than sort of a stratagem that's really good and go, well, I need access to that. To buy that stratagem, I need to have that mark. It feels a bit restrictive. It should be... We get those stratagems, but if you get the mark and you dedicate something, it should feel a bit more rather than less, if that makes sense. So, here's my solution to it, you know, drop Death of the False, false Emperor and make marks relevant. So you don't get Death of the False Emperor, but then you have to dedicate marks, and that's going to affect your force. Choose a Chaos God for your army to develop themselves, or maybe if you want, I don't know, they gain an advantage. So, here's a couple of examples. Marker Nuggle, Infantry, Beast, Cavalry, all gain an extra wounds. Uh, vehicles and Monsters, now I've not included Swarms things, game idea. Vehicles and Monsters get disgusted and resilient. Nice, makes a bit more uh, resilient like Nurgle. Marker Corn, all units reroll hit rolls of one in turns they charge, were charged or heroically intervened. That may clash against Chaos Lord a wee bit, but you know, I'm just throwing ideas out there. Marker Slanesh, I didn't really know one for this one, maybe something if Moro slain. Uh, or lose a wound, it can maybe attack back or something, that might be nice, you know, if it dies, you get an extra round of attacks. I, look, I ain't perfect in this one, I'm just throwing ideas. And Mark of Zine, true roll, save rolls of one, however again, this may be a little bit too good, I think, certainly when, like, Thaz Sons first came out, they got, like, re-roll saves and they proved to be really, really good, so maybe that's not an ideal one. But my point is that you could lose Death to the False Emperor, and instead of having Marks of Chaos being gatekeeping uh, ideas that you go right you know I need to go Marcus Lanesh to do you know obliterator so they can fire twice you go right well you know that stratagem is there it's a universal stratagem but if I take that you know Marcus Lanesh then it wouldn't be for obliterators because you don't really want them in combat though it can be all right you'd maybe want you know Mark of Nurgle on them you know basically you choose your marks because they're gonna give you a bonus so drop Death to False Emperor, because it only affects certain parts of your game. Make marks relevant again, and it can affect the whole army. Hope that makes sense, like game mechanics, you want a whole army trait to be, you know, you choose it so it affects the whole army, not that you go, right, cool, the whole army benefits against Imperium. Not facing them today, all that rules chucked out the window. So I feel making marks of chaos are going to be, as a focus, is a lot better. So there was a lot of complaining there. I know like this is one of the oldest codexes, so there's a lot of things that are a problem. There's many things that Chaos have done well, and I will go into that, that have been good uh, certainly for them over the years in this one, but we are talking about the codex and how the army feels. So I'm, there's going to be a bit of complaints, so I'm sorry if it feels very negative. Warlord Traits, uh, just going to touch on this one. So overall fine on this one, this is a little bit too much focus in the Chaos Space Marine books in terms of close combat orientated Chaos Lords, which is perhaps a little bit boring, but Psychic Awakening does actually offer so much variety for Chaos Legion ones that it sort of balances out. Uh, I will speak on Psychic Awakening a little bit later in a bit more detail, but this is part a real good strength of Psychic Awakening, and it does a lot of uh, offer a lot of options, which is fantastic. I'd maybe love to see uh, a bit more sort of, you know, army buff warlord traits rather than all being combat or survival but overall i think that the ones in the codex are not bad 
Psychic Awakening really expanded on them in a nice way. You know, you've got your general ones, but then you've got your Legion ones, and you added, you know, six really nice ones that are focused on them. I thought that was really good. Stratagem, this is a strange one for Chaos Space Marines. On one hand, we have more stratagems than nearly every, every other force. In total for Chaos Space Marines, with Vigilus Defiance, Psychic Awakening, there's nearly a hundred stratagems, if you don't count the stratagems that unlock the formations, etc. However, this is a heck of a lot of options. Uh, one that would make a lot of other forces jealous. There is, however, one big problem to all this. In total, there's only about 13 universal stratagems, which most of them are fairly met at best. Uh, you do have Vetch Long War, which uh, Universe 1, which is great. The rest of them are either held behind Legion rules, plenty of them in Vigilus and Psychic, uh, Psychic Awakening with Faith and Fury. Yeah, a lot of those stratagems, and there's loads there, they are held behind uh, your Legion sort of you know, gatekeeping there. And this is crucial also behind marks. Some really nice ones there are held behind marks. Now on one hand this is not bad. It means you have to, to really choose between your legions, which is critical, uh, and your marks, you know, it makes you have to make choices there. However, it's also important to have the base stratagems, you know, be not bad. You know, you want them to be better, your base ones go. These really you know help kill space means on all level. And then the Legion one should add thematically to your force, but the base ones just don't feel that great. The ones in Vigilus are also slightly lackluster as well, but the ones in and Waiting are far better because they look at your Legion and go, this is what your Legion represents and how they can make them better, but the base ones are just not as ideal. Uh, lastly, the Marks. Marks being another gatekeeping for stratagems is not ideal. Okay, there's only four of them. So it's not that bad, but two are actually pretty darn good, and many forces actually have them as universal traits, or at least the fight twice one that's seen quite often, and it usually is universal, but for chaos it's held behind the tag of Mark of Corn, I believe. Just hurts to have another gatekeeping uh, gatekeeping mechanic on stratagems. Also, it just kind of makes it kind of boring when your main consideration is marks, other than some psychic abilities and chance. That's all they really affect. I just wish marks played a bigger effect. Also, to get more balanced, solid amount of universal stratagems. You know, Psycho Waning did do well with it, but the base level isn't sorted. Relics. So this one is kind of, sort of, sucks for chaos. There's only two relics in the main rulebook not kept behind walls, uh, gatekeeping walls. Uh, that is Marks of Chaos and Legions. A further one from Psychic Awakening. Uh, yeah, I think there's another one in Psychic Waning. I think it's the Demon Weapon, which can be used by anyone without a mark. I could be wrong on that one. Uh, I would need to get the book, but I'm not going to check live on camera. But there's so few that are like, oh, you know, the Universal, and they're quite good. No other force goes right. You have the gatekeeping of Legion Trays, which many do, and you have the gatekeeping of Marks. And that just, again, you know, it just feels like you're getting less compared to other forces. It does make sense fluff-wise, and some people may enjoy it, but I think you do need to have, again, the base level universal ones to make it feel good, and then add on them by making Legion ones. Uh, overall, I would say this is a little bit too much focus here. Yeah, so, Legion-specific ones are actually, there's, so Legion-specific ones, this you'll find in Ablaze, and you'll also find them in Psychic Awakening. They're actually really good. Now, when I agree that they should be there, like, there should be, Legion specific ones, and they did a great job of that in Psychic Awakening, but just Blaze also did it not too bad uh, with Black Legion and some of the Renegades. You know, that's really good. That should be the addition, not the base level, in my mind. So you can make the Fearsome Chain Lord. In fact, I think they did it in Space Marines where the base level Space Marine book actually doesn't have, because they had the supplements, all their relics are open to everyone, and they're okay, they're not the greatest. Uh, and then they made the gatekeeping ones in their supplements. Now, I'm not trying to advocate supplements for Chaos, I'll explain that in a bit with uh, Psychic Waning. But what I'm saying is that in their base level book, there is so many gatekeeping, there's only two to choose from, which ain't ideal. But when they did make them Legion specific, they did a great job of it. The Chain Lord for Black Legion, I know there's some great ones, think for Iron Warriors. So yeah, when the Legion ones, they did great, they just don't have the base level done pretty well. And again, I'd love to have a bit more sort of or ability ones that benefit your troops, 
because those are really good and in this game that kind of helps most more than anything rather than just being all combat all survival etc so base level bad legion specific added by sake awakening good psychic abilities for the lack of variety that they're low uh, so lack of variety that we have you know the loyalists actually have more variety if you add their supplements in the chaos legion ones you know didn't get their supplement equivalent the chaos space marine psychic abilities are actually really really good death hex presence diabolic strength warp time and then there's the god specific ones are actually really good as well it's hard for me to be really negative in this one they are actually all useful and i do switch between them depending when they are needed the malefic ones fine if you're running like demon chaos space marines then yeah they're actually not bad as well overall really strong uh, area here considering lack of choice if anything i would love something for world eaters who basically if they go psychers there's like it's not going to happen uh you know we had the corn demonkin in seventh edition we now no longer have that and then you had the blood tithe points which i believe is in age of sigmar what i'm saying is that you know world eaters when they get a codex because i believe the intention is at some point emperor's children world eaters will get them they do need to have an equivalent here to replace psychic stuff and blood tithe was i think the answer for that in seventh but because we haven't had you know much expansion that one you know we've had the thousand sons death guard it is making playing world eaters a little bit more difficult i think the demon prince gives up its psychic potential for like one extra attack don't quote me on that one and that actually hurts a wee bit because the psychic potential is so much better yeah if you had blood tithe that'd be good Litencies of Bow, overall absolutely fine. Some fine abilities that work depending on your objective for your Dark Boss. So I don't play them very often, and maybe that's a problem on that side. Maybe I should. But generally, if they had like a jump pack similar to the Loyalist, then the movement would allow them to get where they need to be. Uh, but we do also have our helpers for them. I forget what they're called, but they do mean you usually cast on a two, which is fine. That one's also very, very good. But it's not an area i'm i think the abilities are fine they're good they're okay but it's not a huge consideration for many battles i think they are i just wanted to mention them i think they're fine so the summary of this so go and summarize this part which i'll briefly speak on vigilous blaze and psychic awakening but just essentially not required reading bun expansion it was written with formations in mind however as we haven't seen many of these expanded on you know we haven't seen formations formations i think since vigilous i think uh, games workshop did not really like the rule set they didn't think it was working which is ironic because i think in ninth that maybe it might work a bit more just with how the command points work that you get a base level command points you know right i'm going to put that into that command point uh, command points into that formation i'd say there's you know you know they'd be but oh you know they'd be far more effective there but overall formations didn't really work too well you know they're basically they give you an extra piece of war gear which you'd be like ah oh, one piece of war gear they give them like an extra strategy or two which is more points spent you have to spend a point spend more points it just didn't work out as ideal as i think they wanted and that's not a bad thing because in seventh formations were crippling uh do you remember the sort of uh oh i can't remember the attachment name for necrons and i want to say it it's like there but i can't remember it and it was crazy good and then space Marine ones detachments just boosted the level of you know seventh edition to crazy so i'm kind of thankful they maybe didn't go back there and also psychic abilities and some really made the edition go to somewhere else you know dark held and tile suffered for that and necrons to degree but they had really good formation um whoa, where am i it works as an expansion to the updated codex and the next rules for black legion traitor teams. we'll get onto this in a bit so yeah the black legion rule and the traitor stuff yeah they were fine they were good the formations may have not worked out well but if you really like black legion yeah they're there there's more stuff great chain lord's cool and if you want to make renegade stuff but i don't think you know they're as relevant as say psychic awakening psychic awakening i absolutely love and there's many reasons that i think it was really solid and expanded on legions really really well a handful of extra and useful stratagems that seem to matter to legion along with relics and warlord treats that again uh, traits that again seems relevant to the legion really good maybe if they add psychic abilities you know a few extra ones that would be nice but i can live without them with traitor legions this should have been a new custom legion rule so 
be the traitor list going back to a place. The traitor legions now, uh, when they do get an update to Chaos Space Marines, I have no, I, no doubt that they'll just drop Renegade chapters and just go. Maybe they'll keep Red Corsairs because they're quite iconic. But I think it's just going to be, you know, make your own Renegade chapter. I think that's the way it's going to go. But when we get a new codex, I think a blaze will largely be made redundant. Uh, yeah, Psychic Awakening <coughs> was good. And frankly, I wish more Psychic Awakenings were more in this format. What do I mean by that? Frankly, Space Marine Supplement should have been like this. One book expanding on all the rules. I actually like the supp supplements for Space Marines. If I were a fan... If you're a fan of Imperial Fist in our hands, then they're really nice books to get a bit more lore, a bit more story. Uh, but the Chaos Space Marine Psychic Waiting proves that you can kind of fit like all the supplements into one book. You know, however, that is not as profitable. You know, let's not kid ourselves in that one. And we can complain about all we want, but it is what it is. They went down more of the route for Space Marines to write the supplements to expand in lore and give you a bit more identity for your legion. But there is people who just want the rules, they just want them in a handy handy codex. And I feel that Chaos Space Marines got the better of that. They got all their sort of supplement stuff in one tidy book. You've got your stratagems, not as many, but just enough that I think it was relevant. You've got your warlord traits, you've got your relics, and they felt thematic, all of them in one book. And I feel that if you had done that, for Space Marine players, they'd actually be really thankful and go, cool, I'll just buy that book, and if I really like Iron Hands and stuff, I'll buy that as well. I can understand why they did it as separate ones. It's obviously made a heck of a lot more money. But my point in this one is that Chaos Space Marines actually got quite good in that one. So yeah, I think the Psychic Awakening was great work there. If they end up doing supplements for Chaos Space Marines, and I'm sure it's being discussed, I'm not going to lie, there's going to be certain ones I'm definitely going to want. I'm going to want Iron Warriors. I'm going to want Alpha Legion. I'm going to want... Uh, what you call them, uh, not word bearers, night lords, I'm going to want that. I love those and I'd love to get books and read about them and stuff in there as well. So yeah, that's, they do have their side. People who are diehard dedicated to religion aren't going to buy those books, but they'll probably buy the universal book as well. Yeah, so you may, you may have people who buy all supplements, but if you had one handy book and then if they're dedicated to one book, then they might do that. And I just feel that with Chaos Space means Psychic Awakening, they did that, and it was really good, and I feel there's a lot of successes in the Psychic Awakening for Chaos Space Marines. The problem overall for Chaos Space Marines is the Foundations, i.e. the Chaos Space Marine Codex. Though they got the Volume 2 of the Codex, it added missing day slates, small updates, but was not a whole new Codex, and it feels it's a missed opportunity. The Legion traits are bad in that Codex. Bad. Bad. Black Legion, bad. And this is really painful. It makes these iconic legions feel terrible. Word bearers is, you know, just forgettable. Why even bother? Black Legion, uh, which Blaze had a chance to fix. I feel a hugely missed opportunity. Just didn't happen. I would say this affects every model in the game. But par armor issues from early editions only affecting infantry, bikers, characters, hell brutes. Space Marines proved it can be fixed, and hopefully, ninth edition, it will. Death of False Emperor, and I've mentioned before, Demon Summoning, uh, you know, Death of False Emperor only affecting like a third or half of your games. It may be fluffy, but it just doesn't feel nice as a game perspective. Uh, Combat Doctrine really worked out well, so I'd love to see that. Maybe you just make it the marks, as I suggested, that would maybe fix Death of False Emperor. Summoning isn't really a thing, and I really struggle to find a solution to that. Summoning did help break the game. In 7th edition because it became so predominant just to summon free units to the board and you just flooded the board and then those units started summoning more units so i don't know how to fix that one but i'd love to see it become more relevant again uh, as said problem with the marks gatekeeping on that one you know i don't want to default make a blair or slanesh just to get to a stratum i want to go right i want them to be more enduring because i want them to be nurgle and uh, maybe i have to make them corn because the rest of my army it has to be corn uh, but they will fight nicer in combat. Maybe Sinesh, that if they die, they get to make one shooting attack. That'd be nice on like a 4+. plus. Not default, because that's too powerful. Maybe on a 4+, plus, that unit gets to shoot before it dies. That'd be cool. And Zinch, you know, I said, reroll once to save. But on a Blit Rares, that would be crazy. That would be absolutely mental. So, as I said, base codex, the universal rules, Death, False, Emperor, and Summoning. 
and uh, marks. Those are areas I'd love to see addressed. Pretty much summarised 20-25 minutes of me yammering on there. Uh, so the next part is, and I'll try and keep this a bit shorter, is looking at the roster of our choices. And you're going to get this idea when I said I don't count demons as sometimes space as chaos space wings. There's going to be a lot of discussion on that, and you can disagree with me all you want. Special characters is hard to complain here, but I will in one or two notes. Overall, special characters for Chaos Beings have been fantastic. Have you seen a bad one? What a darn it, what a good model. That was fantastic. It is stunning. Then we have Harkin, which is a cool model. I think it's cool. The rules may not work, but it's a cool model, and that's kind of what you know special characters are there to represent their legion. Uh, Karn, though, is actually an old update now. I believe he was in 7th edition when Demonkin came out. Certainly, I think he was before uh, 8th edition. But I still count it as a new update. Then we had Typhus. Uh, I think Araman also was updated in 7th, but don't quote me on that one. I'm 90% sure that was the case. Uh, Cypher, again, 7th edition update. But they are all updates within like the past five years. Uh, really only the, you know, you've also got Fabius just been updated or will be. Really only Huron and Lucius are left now. Now this is great and many other forces would kill for this, you know, to get their special characters updated. But I have to mention one thing. We know Games Workshop wants to expand the Chaos Codexes to separate forces, i.e. Death Guard and Thousand Sons, maybe we'll get Emperor's Children and World Eaters. And I support that because Space Marines are, you know, the poster child and if you like if you're like me, I don't really play Space Marines very often. I prefer the eviler side because that's the sort of things I like to play as is more evil characters, Dark Elder being my favourite for force. I want to see them separated as well and expanded on similar to Space Marines, that'd be really really nice. So when you do take this separation into consideration then it is a bit more of a problem. Now one thing I would say is that many people may say oh why don't they do it with all of them and yeah maybe you can but, you know, Dark Elder Cabals are not as iconic as, say, um, you know, the Chaos Space Marine Legions or the Space Marine Legions. It just isn't the case. So I can see when the invested amount of money they want to put into the supplements or separation would be into Chaos and Space Marines. Just to say in that one, you're not going to have it with Dark Elder. I like it because I, am, I love Dark Elder, but my point of the matter is that the separation of the forces, you know, Death Guard having their own codex, uh, is not going to apply to like Death, Dark Elder and the Cabals, even though they've got homunculus and witches, it's not going to happen. But my point behind all this is that when you take away these Legion specific ones, now Typhus and Araman are now out of the Chaos Space Marine Codex, they can only be taken on a specific one. If you take that into account with Karn and uh, Lucius, then you're only stuck with Abaddon, Harkin, Fabius, Cypher and Huron. So only Black Legion, a scientist of his own faction, which is going to be in Sack Awakening, a pirate, so a renegade, who can only work for Red Corsairs, and whatever Cypher is. I mean, it's hard to justify Cypher. He's also Imperium. That only means that in the Chaos Space Marine Legions, you're only represented by, truly, Black Legion. And I would just love to see what they did with, Chaos, uh, with Space Marines, which is they added in characters for just about every Legion. It just felt more iconic. I'd love to see Iron Warriors, I'd love to see Alpha Legion, if it's at all possible. I suppose it would be called like Alpharius or something. I don't know, Alpha Legion, you know how tricky they are. Uh, Night, La Night Lords, I mean there's some really cool potential characters. I know there's a Night Lord character, <gasps> I can't remember his name. He is in the Horse Heresy sets and I'm pretty sure he's still running around the universe because he's the warp is strange. I can't remember, I believe he comes with an S. But I'd love to see him updated as a character for Night Lords. There's a really cool, one of the most horrible characters in Iron Warriors. I can't remember their name as well. But the point is, I'd love to see his iconic units as well. Now, don't get me wrong, this actually applies to a lot of forces. You know, uh, look at Necrons, for instance. You've got loads of special characters there. I, th I think more than Chaos Space Marines, but they're all Sutek, and two of them are non-aligned. You don't have your Novak one. You don't have your Nihilaka one. You know, this is a problem, I think, that they focus too much on just one legion and other ones don't get rules. You know, I think that for the clans, that's a bit of a problem for orcs. Um, Dark Elder, I mean, you don't have Vex, but that's another conversation for an hour day. Chaos Space Marines, I'd love to see the, the legions, what they did for Space Marines, do that for Chaos Space Marines, and I think everyone 
would be really happy. I think Xenos should get it as well a wee bit, but Chaos Space Marines are in a different league in that one. I'm just going to say in this video, give us Vect as well, that would be really nice. Uh, moving on, HQs onto the generic HQ choices. You know what, I think Chaos Space Marines actually have one of the strongest variances out there, much better than their loyalist counterparts. You may be going, what? They have so many, I think they had like 17 to 21 choices in HQ. But my point on that one is seven of them, of their choices, are just different captains, either in Terminator armor, in Gravis armor, in non-armor, blah, 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 blah. And I don't believe that, you know, seven choices of what your captain is equipped with is actually variance in gameplay. So let's talk about the Chaos Space Wings. They have the Demon Prince, which operates quite differently. Now, conversation on demon keywords and stuff. I do believe I may be trapped by nostalgia, and I'll mention this one as well that demon, it has a demon keyword, so maybe it doesn't belong in Chaos Space Marines, but it is obviously an Ascended Mortal some of the time. So I can accept it in Chaos Space Marines. You want to fight me on this one? Fair enough. Uh, there is two types of Chaos Lords, your regular and your Terminator. You've got three different types of Sorcerers, if you include the Master of Possession. You have an Exalted Champion, does a bit more of a different role. You have the Lord Discordant, you have the Warpsmith, you have the Master of Executions, you have the Dark Apostle. So that's a good bit of variance, you know, you've got your Sorcerers and your Chaos Lords. Yeah, there's a wee bit of them, but, you know, that's very different to what Dean Prince does versus what Lord Discordant can do. And that just gives you a good bit of variance that the Space Marines don't have, and I spoke about that in their video. So I like it, I think it's really good. If I was to complain, because I can, uh, is that maybe a Dreadnought would be nice, a, dre a Dreadnought character. But overall, in terms of the variance of what these de these do as game mechanics, I actually think it's one of the strongest out of all the codexes. So that is fantastic. And I'm always welcome to people's ideas. What would you like to see as an HQ? Let me know. Uh, or troops or anything. You can always, I love reading people's ideas. Troop choices. Six choices to choose from. Only joking, there's only two. Let's not even entertain demons. That's just filling out the book. If you are going to take demons, you're going to take them as a demon detachment. Like... You lose like your legion trait if you do that. I don't think anyone really has taken demons as part of a case chaos space wing detachment. It costs you too much, and you should just take a demon detachment because you gain more out of it. It's just really just filling up the rules, and I don't like that. And I like to call it out on that. Yeah, so I think they should be removed, and no one will really notice. Just take them out of the codex. Overall, two fine choices, Chaos Space Marines and Cannon fo Fodder, I mean Cultists. This is fine. Personally, I believe all Marines should be two wins. I think that would really help to make Marines more efficient on the board. You know, discussing Resilient and Death Guard and Toughness, that's nice, but two, two wins just makes it so much better. However, I do have a lot of love for the Chaos Space Marines there. When they updated the models, they were fantastic. I love them. I I bought a whole load of them. Uh, I think they're really, really good art, uh, good models. But power armor again is suffering. Uh, cultists die well, which they do. They're cheap. They die well. Great. That's kind of the role they're going for. I just feel that the chaos space means, and this is similar to space means as well. They just don't. The power armor doesn't do it as well anymore, and that is a real shame. But the models are fantastic. If I was to go with anything, maybe a sniper unit like Space Marines, but I partly believe snipers should be elite. You know, can you imagine like an Alpha Legion Space Marines? I, that'd be really cool, just sniping away. I think that'd be nice. Uh, but generally, I'm quite happy with the troop choices. If you've got any suggestions, let me know. Maybe like, a, maybe, you know, I say demons should be their separate codex, possibly, like Demon Space Marines, Demon Kim. Uh, maybe they should have a troop as well. Maybe Possess should be troop for them. I'm ranting on that one. Speaking of elites, 11 choices here, however, I'm only going to really count a few of them, five or six. Why do I not? Why do I say this? Because I do not count Plague Marines, Corn Berserkers, Rubik Marines and Noise Marines as they shouldn't be in the generic Chaos Space Marine Codex. To me, that's almost like putting Wolf in Imperial Fists or Death Company in Iron Hands. You know, I could maybe forgive Black Legion. You know, they do pour in, they should have special where they can pour in, you know, separate certain units and only these units into their one. And maybe for your custom renegade, maybe, 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 but I'm, you know, corn berserkers and like with the Alpha Legion, they are part of Alpha Legion rules. 
and I have for once put Rubik and Marines as part of Alpha Legion, it just doesn't feel nice. Now I get lore wise that because they got into their own war bands and everything, fine, but when you're bringing an Alpha Legion force, I don't think it should have like Quorum Berserkers in it. So having these, cho I believe these choices should maybe go into their separate codexes uh, because they just don't feel like generic ones, if that makes sense. So that's kind of how I feel on that one. Does that make sense? I know that's like separating more choices out of Chaos Space Marines. I'm actually going to do that a lot, but I just don't feel that they represent the legions, the generic legions. They should be part of their codex, that's what they do, and if you want to bring them, bring a detachment of that. For the rest of the choices, we have Fallen, like Cypher. I mean, I've never used Fallen in this edition, I don't know who has. They're kind of like Chosen, but with different options and stuff. I mean, if you want, maybe they should do, uh, you know, a White Dwarf if Fallen, you get Cypher and Fallen and some rules there, that'd be nice, but I don't think they should be in Chaos Spaceman Codex. You've got Terminators, you've got two units of Possessed, uh, the Gear Possessed as well, in that one. Hellbrute and Mutilator, so really you only have one, two, three, four, five choices. I am truly counting, and people again may not like that, and I'm complaining, but it's just the mindset I've got as is that Mark unit should be away, and that Fallen is a weird choice to stick in there. I just feel it's filling up the slots. You know, so yeah, this is where people really disagree with me. I can only count two of them really being Chaos Space Marines Terminators and Hellbrute. Hellbrute is a Chaos Space Marine. The Possessed and Mutilators are not kind of in my mind. People may disagree with me that Demon Units are not Chaos Space Marines, and I think you may agree with me when you come to the Heavy Support range, and that is fair guess, and I can accept that, but to me they're almost like Demonkin, and I'll speak about that while I think of that at the end, but keep in mind this idea of Demonkin, you know, half Demon, half Mortal, that is what I kind of look at. Either way, I think this does need to be expanded, adding in Snipers would be really, really nice, Another heavier armor unit for combat would be really, really good as well. Maybe a mid-range unit, possibly a Corn Berserker equivalent. You know, maybe something that would be equivalent to be used, just dual wielding, you know, axemen of some type that aren't Corn Berserkers. And that could they go, I want some like Corn Berserkers, but not Corn Berserkers. It's only because Corn Berserkers are iconic to World Eaters, and yeah, they have appeared in Black Legion, but I don't appear they'd work well in Alpha Legion. So something of an equivalent would be really nice, you know, a sneaking unit would be really nice, one that, you know, you've got Reavers, Reavers probably, that and Chaos Space means job's good. Fast attack choices, there is only four choices here, and the poorest choice overall, Raptors, Warp Talon, Spawn and Bikers. Overall I can accept Spawn in this, because Spawn are not demons, they are just being mortals, have been horrifically mutated, so that's fine. Less so Warp Talons, now Warp Talons still look very, very like mortals, so I can partly accept it, but again I do have my ideology of demons should be in a demon kind of codex. Fast Attack is an area and that 40k doesn't do particularly well and there's not much representation in it. Uh, I think they are expanding on it, I know with uh, Admech they, have, they went from two choices, they've now got I think six choices, so they expanded on it well there. Uh, I just think maybe a land speeder or something there, you know, it has to be a Chaos cool Space Marine, would be really, really nice. Fast Attack has always been a tricky one. Heavy Support. So, Heavy Support. You've got Havocs, you've got the Vehicle Fillers, which is Predators and Vindicators, they fill different roles. Uh, you've then got the Heavier, you've then got Land Raider, they're all mortals. But then you have Obliterators, which are Demons, and then four Demon Engines. So in total, you only have four Chaos Space Marine choices and five which are kind of demons and I think you know I think you, you, you now one thing, thing I'd say on my bias right Oblerators and Defilers I can almost be forgiving to be Chaos Space Marines and I think I'm being blocked by nostalgia on that one Defiler does look more like an engine rather than an actual demon and Oblerators do fill an important role but again they are demons you know they are demon infused machines they are not piloted by Chaos Space Marines uh, I do like Demon Engines because obviously they add a, a, a you know, you've got the Molar Fiends and the Venom Crawler and the Defiler adding a combat mechanic in Heavy Support, which not many armies get, and I quite like that. But I'd just love to see more Chaos Space Marines. 
heavier armor, even if it's like weapons that are demon infused, that's all, you know, demon, you know, they don't all need to be combat, they can be, re you know, ammo that's infused with demon essence, they fire out their gun, you know, we've got demon weapons now, but they don't need to be, you know, just all like demon stuff, it can be, you know, mortals carrying demon weapons, and they fire demon rounds, that'd be really cool, and there may be a consequence to that, that'd be in the heavy support one. Uh, you've also got, going to Forge World, you've got the Iron Warrior Tyrant Siege Terminators. You've got the Terminators with like really big rockets on their backs and they're really cool models, I actually love them. They have, if there was like a 40k equivalent, I'd almost certainly use those models because they look really, really good. So that's just some ideas on that one. What, so as I said, the advantage of this though, the Demon Engines being here, is that you do have actually loads of combat orientation for them as well, you know, from your Mauler Fiend, your Venom Crawler, etc. The problem is, you know, so what I'd say is that, and Oblair Rares are good as well, the problem with Oblair Rares, and this is very specific because I used Oblair Rares a lot, is that they went from 7th edition, from being one of the most reliable units because you could use uh, a Last Cannon, you could use Plasma Gun, you could use Melter, they changed their weapons to be reliable because they worked to the situation. They've almost completely gone in the wrong direction, you know, the opposite direction with the player rares. They've gone, yeah, cool. Now they are so random that you can't rely on them. And in this game, that's really, really bad. I know that Iron Warriors actually have stratum that makes them a little bit more reliable. Not by much. I think it allows you to reroll all of them. So you put one command point and you go, I can reroll if I don't like it. Um, but I just don't like that. I'd rather spend like two command points and go, you know, you get three, 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 three. And I'd spend that almost every time. Uh, maybe two command points is a bit much, but not many other units in the game are that random where you get three dice rolls. And you could have the highest strength, you could have the highest AP, and then you're one damage and then you're against the vehicle and you're like, great, that's nowhere near as efficient. In fact, that's definitely a ham to me, where I remember facing Tau, and I dropped in three of rares, and I think the damage and the AP, the strength was high, the AP and the damage was low, I caused like two wounds, and it's all because of this randomness. So blur rares need to be fixed in that one if you want to make them more relevant to Chaos Space Marines. But please keep in the ideology this difference between Demonkin and Chaos Space Marines. I'll say that at the end. Uh, dedicated to transport, one choice and, choice and it's the Rhino. It does the job and it does it fine. If I was to say anything, uh, maybe like drop pods, I think they'd be really nice. I mean Chaos Space Marines, they wrote them to be more combat orientated. But I, there may be a lower reason why drop pods don't appear for Chaos Space Marines very much. I believe there isn't. I think they still use drop pods to a degree. But I don't know what it is. I'd like to see it, but I'm not overly fussed. If there is a reason why they don't use drop pods, let me know. Flyers, just the Helldrake. Cool. Another non-Chaos Space Marine unit. The Helldrake is an interesting one. Uh, its damage is minimal and the best thing it does is like turn one charge and try and hold down units. That's traditionally where I've used it. However, it is utter, where the other one you had the dino bots, this one is a dragon, like the only flyer choice is not even close to a chaos. It's a dragon, it's not chaos space marine at all. You know, that's not chaos space marine, you know, that is a dragon, it's a demon. It feels more like a demon. If you put some more flesh on it, it'd be closer in the demon codex like a soul grinder it just it feels a bit weird now and i know that how the forges work is they infuse demons into the engines to make them that way but it just doesn't feel like a chaos space marines i want a gun flyer you know you've got forge world you've got fire raptor and it is a heck of a good gunship i'd love that sort of equivalent as a chaos space marine i think it would look awesome uh you could just buy fire raptor and i actually have one in storage that should maybe fix up it's a bit bit you know broken broken up a wee bit but I would just like an equivalent that's piloted by Chaos Spaceman. Lord of War, and this one of few sections I can forgive being like a demon inside the engine because it's a big massive thing, it makes it easier to fit in. I can be a bit more forgiving on this side because it should maybe be a Lord of War that works for uh, Demon's Chaos as well. You can do maybe on that one. We've only got one choice which is the Corn Lord of Skull. Fine, it does it okay. I maybe love something a bit more Chaos Space Marine that isn't demon infused, but I think this one's actually not bad. We certainly have more than Space Marines because they've only got Gulliman. That is their only Lord of War choice outside Forge World. They do have their crazy massive boat thing, uh, their Staris thing, which is cool, but it's costly like £300, so nope. 
you know, so yeah, I, I love Lord of War choices. I believe that if any army does not have a Lord of War choice, it should get one. And the corn one is fine, but I think something maybe added would be really cool. And I'd love to hear ideas on that one. And lastly, fortifications. Now, we only have one here. It's that crown thing. I actually love the model. I think it looks amazing. I love potential conversions and generally looks cool. It's rules, though. I hate it. The Psyker Pearl and Doubles is actually good for Grey Knights and Tyranids. You know, people, you know, other forces, they use quite a lot of psychic abilities. It wouldn't work on an opponent that is also Chaos. It's, I don't think it, I think it affects all Chaos, not just friendly ones. So against other Chaos forces, not going to work. The reroll psychic ability is not bad, but I just feel that psychers, when I play them, they have to be on the move. They're not going to sit down in fortification. They need to make sure they're within range of your opponent to hamper them or your, uh, your, your, force, your, uh, your forces. So I don't think they're going to be really have enough time to be around the Knockleth, or I think that's what it's called, Knockleth Crown. And finally, the 5-up inbuilt. And this is something I I complain about more in the game mechanics than anything else. Is that, you know, maybe we put 5-up inbuilt too much on a pedestal. So, look at Terminators, for instance. They come with a 2-up save and a 5-up inbuilt. The only time, really, a Terminator inbuilt comes into effect is when they're hit by minus 4 AP. Because minus 3 AP still brings them a 5 plus save. You know, if something ignores armor, there's not many things that actually straight up ignore armor saves anymore. Very, 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 very few. You know, and minus 4 AP, there's just not that much of it to warrant this universal rule of a 5 pinball. So keep that in mind. When you're going to stick units near this, you're probably going to stick Havocs nearby, which will give them uh, a 5 up pinball, which is fine, but I'd rather just stick them in cover to give them a 2 plus save. And then again, only minus 4 AP actually makes this relevant. You know, if it was something that was maybe minus 1 to hit or gives them a 5 up ignore wounds, I think the 5 up ignore wounds, minus 1 to hit is a really good rule. I know they're cr hammering down on it in 9th edition, which I totally agree with. But rather than 5 up invul, I, you know, I think 5 up invuls are nice for like horde units, but it's not good for elite units because elite units already ignore. A vast amount of stuff you know if you're going to give them an invo it should be you know they can only be reduced instead of an invo save say that their ap you know the armor can only be reduced to a minimum of minus one ap or minus two ap that'd be really good I'm thinking more for terminators on this side you know if they can no longer go before uh, beyond a four up save that'd be really really nice because we don't get storm shield but i just think the five up invo alone uh, might be really nice, but I just don't think, you know, I'd rather take the 2 up save and cover, and you need to hit with minus 4 AP, then I'd get a 6 up save. So in that terms, I don't think that's really ideal. And at that point, I think we're going to end. I'm not going to speak about Forge Worlds, otherwise I'm going to go on for another half an hour. This gives you my idea. I am a big Chaos player, second to Dark Elder, it's probably my favourite faction. Uh, but I just feel that Chaos Space means the real problem is that they got an early codex and it was never truly addressed. Yeah, they slap things on top of it, but when the foundation doesn't work, then everything sort of crumbles down. Yep, that kind of summarises that, the real part, really well. In terms of Rasta, now, what you've got to think is that if Demons were maybe your Astra Militarum equivalent, I look at Demon Kin, which is like the amalgamation of mortals and demons in one, they would be like almost like your sister of battle, where their you know their faith protects them, the demented side to demon kin, and I feel that almost worked when they did bring out demon kin in the shadow spire, shadow spear, for uh, that box set they brought out demon kin book, and it was very very small. Move more towards it, that'd maybe be really cool. But my point on the matter is that I just don't feel there's actually that many chaos space marines in the Chaos Space Marine Codex. Yeah, the troops they do well on, the Elite's not so good, the, f the fast attack is not bad, the Heavy is majority demons, and the Flyer's only demon. I get that demons are a large part of Chaos Space Marines, but I just don't feel there is enough Chaos Space Marines in the book. And on that note, I'm going to end. So, hope there's going to be a lot of rule change. They did such a fantastic job in Space Marines. I'm confident the rules and Chaos Space Marines were great, you know my suggestion of that one. In terms of the roster, and I think I should actually say this is very important, I don't think they should really bring out any more Chaos Space Marine models. We had a huge update in, in 8th edition, and they're now focusing on Necrons. I agree with them that, that maybe the focus now should be on Xenos. 
there's still a lot of ways to go in terms of chaos and maybe bringing Emperor's Children World Detours would be fine. But if you're going to fix chaos, maybe like in terms of the roster and the ways I want, and you can disagree with it, leave it for 10th, you know, because now is the time to focus on Xenos. Thanks again for watching. Please comment, share, like, and subscribe. Sorry, that went on for a wee bit. Uh, I do write these as like things that come to mind all during 8th, you know, and I'd love to hear your view on them. You go, nope, disagree with that. Yep, I agree with that. Please let me know, and I will reply to them as many as I can, because I really love talking to you guys and getting your ideas and stuff. Check us out on social media. We can see upcoming projects. I'm painting a whole bunch of ad mech at the moment because uh, Engine War put me in the mood and I had a load of stuff in grey that needed to be done. So I'm working on that. The other guys are working on their own stuff. And uh, check us out on uh, Patreon as well to help support the channel, bring you more content because we absolutely love doing so. So thanks again, and we'll see you on our Tabletop Salt Battle Report.